Welcome to this miles by foot tour of Baltimore Washington International Thurgood Marshall Airport, code BWI. Located 8 miles from downtown Baltimore and only 25 miles from the Washington Mall, BWI is the busiest of the three airports in the capital region. BWI hosts 14 airlines and is a primary hub for Southwest Airlines. BWI offers 85 non-stop destinations in North America and Europe, most of which have resumed since the height of COVID-19. Baltimore is a great city in its own right, so it deserves a bustling airport to match. Let's explore. BWI has a single landside terminal building, branching into five airside concourses. Concourses A, B, and C are connected airside, and D and E are connected airside. If you're changing airlines in Baltimore, you may have to leave security and recheck your bags before returning through security. If you're not changing airlines, you don't. We'll go backwards this time, starting with concourses D and E. Concourse D is the largest concourse at the airport, containing 22 gates, and it houses the majority of BWI's airlines. Concourse D houses Delta Airlines, easy enough to remember, with multiple daily flights to their hubs in Detroit, Minneapolis, Atlanta, and one daily flight to Salt Lake City. After Labor Day, they'll resume service to three focus cities, Cincinnati, JFK in New York, and Raleigh-Durham. Despite having a hub at Dulles on the other side of the capital, United Airlines offers a robust service schedule to their westward hubs from Baltimore, with two flights a day to Denver, Houston, Chicago, and San Francisco, with one non-stop daily service to Los Angeles. BWI's reputation as a low-cost center, thanks to Southwest, has attracted service from several competitors. Frontier Airlines is also in D, with service to Denver several times a week, and daily service to two Floridian cities, Orlando and Miami. Sun Country offers four weekly flights to its nexus in Minneapolis, connecting Baltimore passengers to over 60 seasonal destinations. And full-service Alaska Airlines maintains a daily flight to Seattle and its nearly 100 destinations. Allegiant is breaking into Baltimore with six destinations. Asheville, Punta Gorda, Sarasota, Knoxville, and Destin are served twice a week with three flights a week into the sixth, Savannah Hilton Head. Of all the non-hub airlines, Spirit is scheduled to offer the most flights and most destinations by the end of 2021 as part of their aggressive expansion of routes. Currently, they fly to eight destinations, Atlanta, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, Vegas, LA, Tampa, Cancun, and San Juan, Puerto Rico, with 10 more daily destinations scheduled to be added in September. Pending approval, Miami will make 11. Boutique flies two daily services on eight-seater turboprops to Pittsburgh and back by way of a stopover in Altoona in central Pennsylvania, and they offer subsidized daily service to Messina, New York, a small airport just south of the Canadian border, and from there to Boston. Southern Airways Express, a longtime tenant at BWI, left in June 2021. Check out my review of their service from their new home at Washington Dulles in an upcoming video. Air Canada is also located in Concourse D, with three daily flights to Montreal, an hour's drive from Messina, and Toronto, both resuming in September. Speaking of international travel, let's walk to Concourse E, home to international travel at BWI. Condor Airlines currently flies twice a week to Frankfurt, Germany, and as Europe continues to reopen, more destinations will become available from their hub. British Airways is scheduled to restart its daily London Heathrow service in October. Concourse E contains customs and immigration, too, so most international flights land here, regardless of the airline. The Air Force's Air Mobility Command stages flights from here, too, so you can sometimes catch a glimpse of some military aircraft up close. The other half of the airport has three concourses. Concourses A and B are dedicated to Southwest, and they share Concourse C with American and Contour Airlines. American has robust service at BWI to four destinations, most frequently Charlotte, but also daily to their hubs in Dallas, Miami, and Chicago O'Hare. Service will resume in October to JFK and to Philadelphia, whose 90-mile flight averages just 53 minutes gate to gate. Contour Airlines, an independent regional partner, flies to and from Macon, Georgia, 
If you're flying from Macon, Contour will check your bags through on your next American flight for added convenience. If you're like most people at BWI though, you'll be in concourses A and B, home to Southwest. Southwest has more flights than the rest of the airlines at BWI combined twice over, with around 180 departures a day to over 70 weekly destinations, too many to list. Most of their routes have resumed following mass vaccinations, including a few international flights to Central America and the Caribbean each day. Throughout these concourses, you'll find Southwest's unique branding touches, as well as typical Southwest customers, families and couples traveling together on vacation. BWI represents one of the most modern Southwest hubs. These two concourses have been upgraded with new dining and shopping options, most of which are open during the pandemic. Concourse A and B are connected by a raised food court with lots of food choices on one side and shopping options on the other, overlooking the larger gates. It's no secret that spacious airports are a breath of fresh air for many after sitting on a cramped plane for the last hour and a half, and BWI is designed well to exploit the space while also not being so cavernous to make your walk times long between flights. Concourse A is the smaller and currently quieter of the two concourses, with five gates below the shared food court and six gates down a short corridor. Concourse A has everything you need and nothing you don't, and it's got sufficient seating, outlets, and space to spread out without being too far from your next gate. If you need a quiet drink or a nap before your flight, this is a good place to hide out. Concourse B has 14 gates and is much busier, but it's also more spacious. There's tons of food options and even a couple mini food courts with seating along the concourse. Southwest's busiest destinations are all in Florida, no surprise, with Tampa and Fort Lauderdale fighting over number two, and Orlando taking the top spot with around 10 flights every day. BWI features an observation gallery upstairs above the concourse B and C security checkpoint. It contains several exhibits on flight operations at the airport and space travel, and binoculars to plane spot. The gallery is free and open to the public, meaning that you'll need to leave security if you've flown in. At the stairway up to the gallery, there's also an exhibit on the airport's namesake, Thurgood Marshall, our first African-American Supreme Court Justice. If BWI is your final destination, you'll leave the secure area and go downstairs to baggage claim. No matter where you exit the secure area, Southwest claims are to the left and everyone else is to the right. Once you've claimed your bags, you'll discover that BWI has more options than just about any airport in the country to leave, and nearly all of them require a shuttle. BWI provides a free shuttle service outside baggage claim that will take you to ground transportation, whether that's the airport's dedicated car rental center, the parking garage, or to BWI's very own commuter rail station. There are four easily identified shuttle stops located outside the baggage claims at street level. It's important to check the service for each bus that pulls up. Not all buses go to the same place. Rental car center and parking shuttles are very frequent, once every four or five minutes, so don't worry if there's not room for you and your family on that bus that just arrived. The commuter rail station shuttles are much less frequent, about 15 to 20 minutes between services. BWI was the first airport in the U.S. with a dedicated heavy rail station, and it remains one of the busiest in the Northeast Corridor. The station serves the Penn Line of the Maryland Rail Commuter, or MARC, train, and several Amtrak services, including their Acela High Speed Service, the fastest in the country with six daily departures. You can get from this platform to Union Station in Washington, D.C. in as little as 25 minutes. Baltimore's light rail service operates a spur to the airport, whose terminus can be found right outside Concourse E. The light rail will take you to Camden Station in downtown Baltimore in about 25 minutes, with departures at least every half hour or every 15 to 20 minutes at peak travel times. Baltimore's proximity to Washington, D.C., Southwest's hub, and Baltimore's own tourist attractions have driven traffic and growth at its airport, making it a critical part of the Mid-Atlantic's infrastructure. Odds are your visit here is just a connection, but if you're stopping here, you'll have plenty to see and do, and it'll be easy and exciting to get there. If you like this tour, please consider subscribing to Miles by Foot. My next airport tour takes us south to an airport that's quickly gaining traffic and attention as its region grows. Find out where we're headed in my next video, and until then, thanks for watching, and keep moving forward.